Welcome back, girls and boys. Today we'll be talking about this crazy plugin called Multipass by Kilohertz, now part of the Slate Digital All Access Pack. So let's get into it. As I told you, we'll be discussing this incredible plugin, Multipass. Well, what it is in the first place? Multipass is a kind of a host of micro plugins. It's like a plugin that allows you to install several little plugins inside of it in, a, in, in an interesting way. Let me explain. Here we got uh, one of the patches that I created. It's, this is a fairly simple one. But uh, in general, it's gonna, it's gonna help us to, to understand how the system, how this, this plugin works. How it works? That's a great question, Timmy. So let's get into it. Here we got the interface. And I know it's, it looks horrible. It looks like a piece of your nightmares. It's complex. It looks daunting. But a little bit, once you understand how it works, it's fairly simple to use. And actually, it makes total sense. So, first of all, we got this section. The whole plugin works in, in this fashion. We got the signal coming into here and coming out of here. And here is the, mm, the multi, multi pass section of the plugin which is like a multi-band area in which you can install several plugins at the same time. So let me explain one by one and then we go into this part. So in here, you can insert different plugins out of all of this that you got here to select. And this is going to affect the signal as it goes through the plugin without any change. Then it goes into this matrix, which is the multi-band matrix. And in here, you can install, once again, several plugins, the same selection, but band by band in a multi-band fashion with that being said what it means is that let's say that you want to affect only the low frequency of your of your sound let's say that you want to add some more a distortion to your low band to your low frequency so what you would do is this you go to to you to try to find your distortion micro plugin you install you insert it and it's going gonna affect this section because with these handles you can select the bands the area on which that particular plugin is going to be affecting the signal. That's super neat. Then you got in here a post effect section, which is basically speaking, affecting everything that has gone through the plugin up until this point. And from here, it goes straight to the, to the rest of your signal chain inside of your DAW. So now that we have said that, it kind of makes sense. Now, underneath the uh, the rest of the plugin we got this which is basically speaking just a way to control the gain the band of the of each of the bands and also the of the input of the plugin and the output and how wet or dry the signal is been as it is in the whole mix now on top of it we got a macro section which is going to allow us to control several parameters of the of the plugin with just one up which is kind of neat and you can you can control it with your digital with your digital with your MIDI controller, which is super useful because that way you can create something that can be used on a live situation. Or if you are one someone who is like me that likes to program everything, so you you can write your music like if you were performing live. There you have it. Then in this section we get several different ways to manipulate and automate the way our sound is being processed. We get two different LFOs that we can assign to all, basically everything here. Uh, two different envelopes that works exactly as you might imagine. You can control the way that you, you as, as changing the shape of the envelope, you're going to change. You can assign it to the way a parameter is, is being affected. Then you get a pitch uh, area, which is controlling how the, the keyboard it's been re is reacting to the, to the whole thing. Then we got a MIDI section, which once again is self-explanatory. It's just to assign MIDI commands to to the pitch and, and, and a mod wheel, for example, or, or different or parameters. And then we got this. Oh, there you have it. So it's basically speaking, just a old fashioned video game and that's it. So yeah, it has everything, even a video game. Okay, now with that being said, it's time to hit the sounds. In here, what you heard so far is like a super, super cheesy rendition of a super, super cheesy uh, track from the 80s. Out, uh, right out of a, of a really ridiculous uh, 80s movie in the likes of, I don't know, just in mind, Samurai Werewolf in Tokyo or something like that. 
versus the zombie ninjas. That would be amazing. That would be an amazing movie that I would love to watch. So let's get the sounds. The first one is this one, gated bass. And first and foremost, let's mix, let me explain how I decided to create this video. First of all, I picked a simple and the most basic synthesizer that I could find inside of Logic Pro X, which in my opinion is RetroSynth. It's a beautiful synthesizer, easy to use, and it works. It, it gets the job done every single time that I open it. So I love it. And this is how it sounds with, my, with Multipass installed. Nice gated bass, but see what happens once I turn off Multipass. A complete different beast. So let's get into Multipass now. Here is exactly the way that I created the sound. First, I just installed a compressor in the input of my signal chain because I wanted to control the way the, the rest of the process would behave. That way I can control the dynamics right at the very beginning of the signal chain. Then it hits a trans gate, which is, as the name implies, just a gate. There you have it. And that's basically it. In here you can change the amount of slices that you get out of the trans gate. And that's basically it. This is just a fairly simple uh, patch. The next one is this, bass sequence. Nice. Without multipass? <laughs> wow, something completely different. So let me show you how this patch works. As you can see, this is way more complex than the, than, than the previous one. In here, the first thing that I decided to do, I'm gonna turn off every single band and every single part of the synthesizer, synthesizer of the of the plugin, so we can go one by one, and then that way you can see how it is affecting the, 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 the overall sound. So the first thing that I decided to do. I went through RetroSynth and changed the way the voices were working. Instead of going through voices, which is the default, I decided to use Legato. So I can do this, because this thing was supposed to be a bass. So then I went into Multipass. And since I wanted something more uh, aggressive, I inserted this Fracturator, which is like a kind of a distortion. And it's quite nice. And playing ar while I was playing around with the plugin, I, s I found that if you add this thing, the color, and as you turn it around, you start to get this kind of vibey sound. So I went straight to the LFO and automated it. It's as simple as just clicking here, bam, and then you select which of the knobs is going to be affected, and then you just uh, uh, adjust using your amazing taste in music. So it sounds like this. Cool. Then we hit the multi-band section, which is the main, the main dish, the Grand Kahuna. So here we go. The first one is this, the low end. Just taming a little bit the low end because thanks to the fracturator or microplugging, we were getting a little bit more much more, we were occupying way more, way more space than I was expecting it, expecting it to be. So I added some uh, limiter as a way to control the dynamic range of that section. And also I uh, get, got rid of a little bit of the low end energy. The next one, resonator. Which is kind of another kind of filter and uh, it's nice. The next one. A phaser. But remember, this is only a f the resonator is just affecting this part. And now with we got the phaser. And it sounds like this by its own. Remember, this thing is only affecting this area. From this from this little line, 
onwards. Then I added this. And as you can see, it's also mod modulating. It's being changed by the LFO. And also, it's not changed by the first LFO, it's changed by this one. And as you can see, the second LFO is controlling several different parts of the, of the, of the, of the whole patch. And it sounds like this. What it is, is a pitch shifter that, that is going from side to side of this frequency band. And also, it's, con it's being compressed as a way to control the levels. Once again, remember, we are, dealing, we are adding a lot of energy to certain frequencies in certain parts. So the, the best idea to do is to control those frequencies with a compressor, with a dynamic processor. And the last part is this, the post effect. I decided to add once again the, the trans gate, but also I added a filter at the end as a way to sweep some of the frequencies of the top end. And also I added and modulated the Q as a way to add some form of filter resonance. So it sounds like this. Nice. Now the next one, and this is my favorite out of the bunch. This is the cheesy 80s synthesizer. It sounds like... Let me go higher. Excuse my horrible keyboard playing, but it sounds amazing. So let me show you the original. Boring. But now with multipass, we got the. So let me show you the parameters. Here we go. This is a simple effect, actually, because what we're doing is just adding some chorus. Once again, let me get rid of everything. It's just a chorus. To wide up a little bit the sound, then we added, we, I added a com filter that is automated by the LFO. Just to add a little bit more of that 80s vibe, you know, in the likes of a Juno uh, 106. Then I added another filter automated by the LFO. But this time around, this thing is affecting only the mid, mid low frequency range. Also, I added a reverb as a way to extend the tail of the, of the pad. Remember, a pad is supposed to be like a like a soundscaping tool. So now we got the the air at the end. Then I added this, this the stereo widening plugin and an EQ as a way to enhance the, the frequency range that I wanted from that synthesizer. And there you have it. That's how we got it. Now, the last part of this uh, tutorial, it's gonna be this, the string section. It's an interesting sounding plugin, right? So, the way it works is this. First of all, this is a stack, um, a stack folder, and in here it is controlling two different instru instruments at the same time. So, what we got here first is this. This is uh, um, just a basic uh, built-in string arrangement that comes installed with Logic, and it sounds something like this. Let me turn off all of the plugins that I got installed. Oh. Just like that, super boring. Then uh, we get into the interesting part. 
here I used another plugin from Kai Kilohertz, which is called Snap Hip. This is not a Snap Hip overview, but just to just for you to have an idea, this thing is like a, it's following exactly the same principle of, uh, of multipass, but in here you can control and arrange the plugins in a parallel or serious fashion. So it sounds something like this. Way more interesting. In a long, in a short version of how this plugin works and what it is, this is like a, like a build your own plugin, plugin, and that's it. Okay, now uh, going back to multipass, the second sound that you heard inside of this sound is this. And here I decided to showcase one of the built-in sounds, one of the built-in presets that comes with with with, with multipass. And as you can see, it's a complex or a range of different micro plugins, and it works. Very cool. And in conjunction with the strings, it sounds like this. I added a little bit more reverb and also I added an, a last installment of this multipass plugin, which is this preset called Destructor, which is something in the likes of this. It's like a, like a distortion, uh, multiband distortion and low fi uh, plugin. Multipass is a great addition to the Slate Digital All Access Pack. Download it now. I think that it's one of those plugins that once you understand how it works, it opens up a huge array of ideas. As you could see, I created completely different and new sounds out of this little plugin. I was using the whole same, exactly the same virtual instrument. So, there you have it, girls and boys. If you like this kind of videos, leave a like. If you got a question, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and as usual, I will see you when I see you.